Good morning to you, Steve. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. And a new day's coming, I I believe. And uh, I think that we're uh, bringing it about. So, uh, yep. again, I agree. I agree. So here we are. Um, I'm Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, uh, political scientist uh, in Montreal, Montreal, as we say here. And this is uh, introducing as well Steve Struggle of the Black Panthers in the uh, American Revolution scene. So here we go. La last week's video with uh, Ahmed, Abuel uh, Ahmed was uh, 112 views on uh, the two uh, <clears throat> channels that it's uh, been featured on. So nice. that uh, 112 hardcore, you know, serious people can uh, can do whatever they want. <laughs> you know, I agree. This is uh, this is what we're we're doing, and and this is what we're making at the same time. Uh, I have some news to tell you, Steve. Uh, I've uh, <clears throat> I've had to uh, deal with the court here in Montreal. Right. Because uh, I've been charged with a criminal mischief for having written the words and a free Palestine on an empty space in small but capital letters on a poster for the Israel Day Parade. Okay. So, you know, they decided that, you know, this is a criminal act. So it's a called criminal mischief. And uh, the proceeding summarily. Uh, well, the first decision made by the Crown, the Crown Prosecutor, you know, we have a king here, so it's called a crown prosecutor. So they decided to go ahead with the charge. Now, the crown prosecutor is not going to drop the charge, they, which they could have. So that's one. So they're they're into prosecuting me. Okay, fine. So secondly, they're proceeding summarily, which means they're not going to ask for a prison time, which is unlikely, but it means that I can't get a jury. You know, like it's going to be up to a judge. And then they choose, you know, the uh, the judge you know that uh, is going to hear the uh, case, <clears throat> the prosecution does so by by setting the date and the time, so they can choose the judge. So uh, you know this is uh, the problem. The second problem is that uh, in order to get out of detention, when I was first arrested, I had to sign a paper saying that I wouldn't return to the Jewish Community Center. And I didn't know if it meant, you know, until the first hearing or, you know, until the whole process uh, is finished. So it seems uh, that this is a condition that's being imposed, you know, for uh, until there's a judgment, you know, like the whole process, you know, a year, year and a half, two years or whatever. So I can't accept that, you know, so I applied to have this condition uh, removed and the... Uh, first day you know on the first appearance you know this uh, lawyer that was supposed to help me didn't do anything at all he said that he was going to speak to the uh, prosecutor which he didn't so <clears throat> dumped dumped uh, that initial help which wasn't a help got a hold of the prosecutor myself asked the prosecutor to drop that uh, release condition and the prosecutor has refused so next step is that i've applied for <clears throat> a preliminary procedural hearing in order to hear my motion to uh, lift the uh, conditions uh, prohibiting me from going back to the Jewish Community Center. So I've sent that you know, to the court itself and not just to the prosecutor. So the court is supposed to take it up, you know, set a date for a hearing and uh, they haven't done so. <laughs> so they don't even follow their own regulations, you know, their own procedures because they, they don't want do. to let me, you know, uh, go back to the Jewish Community Center. You know, that's the whole point. You know, they don't want me to be part of the Jewish community, even though I'm Jewish. You know, they wanted to find, you know, like a Jewish person can only be a Zionist now, you know, like, so it's no longer a Jewish community. It's a Zionist community, according to the prosecutor and according to the complainant and according to who knows what. So, you know, that's what's happened this week. And the consequences is this. Okay. So, I've, you know, I'm enrolled, you know, to go to the annual general assembly of the Holocaust Museum, which I've been to before, and I've been to various meetings of the Holocaust survivors there at the Jewish Community Center as well, to which I was invited by a Holocaust survivor from Hungary, actually. And so if I go back to the Jewish Community Center, Steve, 
you know, they could arrest me, right? Right, right. Yeah. So I'm going to go back, see if they have the guts, you know, to arrest a second generation Holocaust survivor on the way to an annual general meeting assembly of the Holocaust Museum, you know, in the Jewish Community Center. If they do what that. What is this supposed to be? What, what, what day is this? What, um, what, what day is this you're doing this? Uh, September the 12th. Okay, so we, so we have some time. Okay. Yeah, so we've got three weeks for the court to, to reply and say, oh, yeah, okay, fine. You know, you can have, you know, a preliminary hearing and we can hear your motion, all legally set up, you know, in legal format and everything, you know, and then a judge can say whether or not I should be barred from the Jewish Community Center. Okay, and I don't think any judge can reasonably ask me to, uh, you know, not go to the Jewish Community Center and to the Holocaust Museum when I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor. You know, if they do that, they bring themselves in the court into dis disrepute, discrediting the court itself. So I don't think they would. But in any case, you know, I have to go back to the Jewish Community Center on the 12th and then, you know, see what they will do. You know, like I'm challenging them to arrest me, in other words. And if they do arrest me, my next court hearing is October the 30th. So that would be about a month and a half in prison. And then I would have a chance at the next court hearing to actually have the motion to dismiss the condition heard by a judge, you know, because I don't think the court's going to let me get a hearing to allow a judge to decide on the matter. So that's, you know, like what I'm uh, bound to do, you know, by conviction and, and by logic, you know, like I can't let them get away with anything like that. So the September the 12th is the deadline. And then uh, I'll probably be in prison until October the 30th. So, you know, in terms of Jewish tradition, you know, like September the 12th, you know what that means, you know, because September the 15th is uh, Rosh Hashanah, New Year's, you know, and you're supposed to be, you know, like, it's supposed to be good times. And then, you know, September the 25th is Yom Kippur, you know, the day of fasting, you know, when you're supposed to sort of, you know, beg for your life for the coming year from, from the deity, supposedly, you know, like, so, you know, not many, you know, like Jewish people still believe that, but, you know, to be in prison on Yom Kippur, you know, in uh, fasting, <laughs> well, in prison, you know, like Jewish community will not stand for this. You know, I want the Jewish community to revolt. I want the Jewish community to stand up and say to the Zionist, you know, machers and leaders that are manipulating this whole condition to, you know, get lost and let, you know, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld free. So this is, you know, the way it's going to play out. I think that's what's going to be happening. I don't see, you know, the court, you know, letting me off on this. I'm going to be going in on September the 12th and then challenging them, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, back off and uh, let a Jewish person, you know, be Jewish and not a Zionist. That's about what it is all about. Yeah. Well, I've already won the uh, initial case, you know, the book, you know, my book was banned, you know, from the Jewish Public Library, you know, by this librarian who made the uh, complaint in the first place. And it turned out that the, uh, the administration of the Jewish Public Library had not known what this librarian at the circulation desk, you know, was doing. She just did it on her own, you know, because she's a Zionist and she thinks that she's, you know, obeying a higher authority, which is the Zionist lobby, you know, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs here in Canada. It's like APAC. So, you know, if the uh, higher ups, you know, want to, you know, let this, you know, roll out as it's going to be rolling out, you know, then fine, you know, they're going to suffer the consequences. And then we're going to have to have a, an accounting afterwards. I can call a Jewish court, Kahila. I can call on the Canadian Jewish Congress to be convened, you know, in plenary to discuss this matter as well. You know, these are sort of legal avenues within the Jewish community that I can pursue as well that I intend to. But they tried to shut down the Canadian Jewish Congress because it's democratic. Any Jewish person can come there registering and vote. You know, like it's totally open. So it's like direct democracy there. And But they shut that down and they replaced it with the uh, Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs because they cut off the money to the Canadian Jewish Congress and they gave it to the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. It's a total manipulation. It's like a dictatorship. 
<laughs> and it's like this state of Israel, the Zionist state of Israel, operating here inside Montreal, you know, within the Jewish community, as if, you know, they're governing the Jewish community, as if they're the government of the Jewish community here in Montreal, even though we don't have a vote. <laughs> you know, this is the whole Zionist trip. That's what it's all about. Well, who was going? It, 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 my, um, who is going to go with you to the um, the community center next month? I'm not sure yet. There has to be some people who come there and uh, and put it on camera and record it. It has to go on a recording. Yeah. Yeah, I I would highly suggest that. I, I I would suggest that you have to have people go with you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But the Palestinians yeah. are are afraid to go there, you know, because. You know, if Palestinians, you know, go to the Jewish community center, even on the sidewalk in front of the place, you know, the police will find some way to arrest them. <laughs> They're going to be like removed, you know, as quickly as possible. You know, that's uh, and then, they, of course, you know, there's an Israel flag flying in front of the place as well, <laughs> together with the Quebec and Canadian flags. <laughs> well, you know, like who decided to put that up there? Not me. You know. It's all a dictatorial practice here that's being inflicted on me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, um, um, what do you? I mean, what do you think is behind all this? Why? Why are we banned from the center? That seems to be the main issue here. Yeah, they're upset. You know, like I've been going to the center, you know, like many times over the years. But this time, you know, like I was just coming out of a Holocaust survivors meeting to which I was invited. You know, a Holocaust survivor invited me to come to the meeting. You know, and, you know, they, of course, you know, like I get to meet people there. They get to know me. They get to know that I'm, you know, like, like, you know, super Jewish, you know, like and all this, you know, like I can speak Yiddish. So they can't deny that I'm Yiddish. Uh, that I'm Jewish, but they're trying to say that I'm not Jewish because I'm not a Zionist, you know, so this contradiction becomes evident, you know, it becomes apparent to everybody in there. So they want to stop me from coming back, you know, because, you know, I was actually invited into the survivors meeting. You have to be invited into it, you know, because it's like not a public meeting. So, you know, they have to stop me somehow. And uh, they're using this as an excuse to do it. And they, you know, like, they even tried to get rid of my book in the Jewish Public Library. But uh, the book is there now, you know, it was brought back because I, uh, you know, threatened to uh, charge whoever was holding the book with theft, which is what it was, you know, like the book was taken from the library. If you steal a book from the library, you know, without, you know, signing it out, without the intention of bringing it back, you know, they charge you with theft. Well, in this case, you know, the police were holding the book. <laughs> so the police were guilty of theft, you know, so they had to bring it back to the library. You know, it's now listed in the catalog there. So that's that, you know, for for the book. And uh, so that case is one, you know, I hope to win the, the rest of the uh, case issues as well. And if not, you know, like then I'll stick it out in prison. You know, I've done prison before. I've even done a hunger strike in prison before when I was in prison in Ottawa against the U.S. cruise missile being tested well, in Canada. Let me ask you this. How would the, how would the prison sentence affect your status in, in Canada? Nothing. N no effect whatsoever. I already have a prison record. The, the only no, effect... No, I'm, I, mean, I'm, I mean, okay, your status in Canada, could it be revoked and you'd be deported because of that? No, I'm a citizen. I was born in Toronto. Just I was conceived okay. in a refugee okay. camp in in, the, in American Germany, you know, after the war, at the Wetzlar refugee camp. But I was born in Toronto, so I, I'm okay. I'm kosher there. But okay. Uh, okay. Well, my important. prison record has kept me out of the United States. I'm banned from the U.S. of A. You know, I can't get in there. Even if I go and try to get in there, you know, if I'm if I step on American territory they can put me in prison for 30 days because, you know, that's the law. So that's the only effect. Now, uh, you know, the effect that it may have on me getting back into uh, Palestine, Israel, uh, that's another question. Yes, I have to defeat this, you know, in order to uh, not 
enable them, you know, to be able to deny, well, deny me entry there. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Right now, can you be denied entry into Palestine? No. 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 Okay. You can't deny, deny me entry. But the last time, they only gave me a visa for a month. Usually, they give a tourist a visa for three months. Last time, they only gave me a visa for one month. Well, let me ask you this then. To, to weighing, weighing the long term situation, is it is it beneficial to lose access to Palestine over access to the Jewish Community Center? I think that's something that you have to consider. Because I've considered if, it. I have a okay, strategy. Okay. I, I got a strategy, Steve. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Because you know, I can always apply for Israeli citizenship. And then they can't what? stop me from coming in. Well, they can't do, do, stop do, me from going, staying there more than three months. Okay. Do 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 they have to grant you this? Do they have to grant you citizenship? I uh, yes, except for you see the right of return for Jewish people to you know the state of Israel is right. basic law there. You know, like every right. Jew, you know, like supposedly you know can you know, apply for yeah. get citizenship. Okay. No okay. Palestinians, you know, like, <laughs> okay, but, you know, but there's a little sort of, you know, clause in that paragraph, which says, unless the person is a threat to the security of the state of Israel. Okay. Now, if they want Have to declare you... me, 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 you know, a threat right. to the security of the state of Israel, well, you know, like, I'll honorably, you know, wear that title. But, you know, they can't prove it. You know, I'll take them to court. So, you know, like yeah. it's turning into what's called a big Megillah, <laughs> a big deal. Okay. Well, how how soon can you begin that process? Uh, as soon as Reason I... I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because if the court proceeding could prevent that from going forward, yeah. but you start before the court proceeding... Then maybe you have well, you have one 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 leg up on them. Also, my question is: Can you get a continuance on September twelfth? Can you get it delayed? Uh, no, because it's the annual general assembly of the Holocaust no, no, Museum. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. Can you get the court hearing delayed? Uh, I, I'm trying to get a court hearing before the twelfth so that I can get the condition struck down. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Which I doubt they're okay. going to give me, you know, because, you know, courts, you know, they take like a month to decide anything, you know, like every little stick takes a month and maybe more. So, you know, like they're incompetent and also they don't have enough staff, not enough judges, you know, because they don't have enough funding court system, healthcare system, you know, everything is underfunded and uh, housing, you know, everything. So, uh, you know, Okay. Let them shaft themselves. You know they're putting themselves into uh, an impossible situation. So it's 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 not me that they're attacking. They're going to end up, you know, like undermining themselves. As far as I'm concerned. Now, if I, you know, like I'm in I'm in prison and I go to court, you know, the twenty uh, the thirtieth of October, as has been set up already. There, you know, like the judge can hear the uh, the motion to lift the condition, so I don't have to go back to prison. Okay, now, if the judge doesn't lift the condition and I do go back to prison, what do I do then, right? The only alternative yeah. at that point, you know, the Palestinians are on a hunger strike now. You know, there's 5,000 Palestinian prisoners, you know, uh, about 1,000 of them are there, you know, without even any charge, you know, called administrative detention under the British colonial rule law. Same law. Okay. So they're going on a hunger strike, you know, to protest their detention and the conditions of their detention. So, you know, like after the 30th, if I'm still in prison, then I would simply join their hunger strike. And then, you know, like, yeah, I challenge them to lift the condition. Or the hunger strike continues. That's the way. That have you, have you written this anywhere? And have you written about this anywhere? Has it been shared in the publications? Not all of it, no. Okay. You know, are there, are there any are there any journals, um, websites, um, are there any venues where you can write 
right what's occurring to sh- spread the word? Yes, I've, uh, you know, the, 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 the motions, you know, the, uh, the notice of motions that I've uh, written up to uh, cancel the condition of release so that I can go back to the Jewish Community Center, together with two other motions, I've uh, sent out, you know, to everything that I have, you know, all the email addresses, all the Facebook groups that I have access to, uh, and all the media that I have access to. And you know what? I got no reply from any media, none. You know, there's this uh, uh, publication in Canada called the Canadian Jewish News, you know, and they're supposed to be covering Jewish news. But what about RT? on their website, what, 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 okay. Okay. but on their website, they even call themselves Zionist publication, you know? So, yeah, well, okay. you know, they shouldn't be calling no, themselves no, Canadian yeah. Jewish News. They should be calling themselves the Canadian Zionist News, you know, but they have not called that, no. What about, Al- language, what, uh, what, about what about Al Jazeera? Al Jazeera, um, yeah. um, press TV, R- RT, yeah, press yeah. T, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I sent them all the emails, you know, they all ignore me. But don't you and I have a, don't we have a, a press TV correspondent as a common friend? Yeah, I think we do, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and he's, so he's contacted that- them. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Very good. Yeah. He has. He okay. Has okay. He very good. Pride. Okay. Very yeah. good. Okay. Well, I just want to, I just want to make sure you get some press coverage here. Yeah. This is very important. This is very important. Uh, what else? If they don't, uh, if the press doesn't come through, even the, uh, you know, third world press doesn't come through, progressives and all that, they don't yeah. come through. Yeah. Then, you know, I continue. You know, I just continue. Right. Oh, yeah. And no, then, no, you know, I'm eventually not. Eventually, they get exposed as you know not willing to cover. You know, like a right. Yeah. Well, that's kind covered. of what they, that's kind of what they need to be exposed as because right now, right now, my main concern strategically is the coverage of the story because I think that could positively positively impact the outcome, and because it seems to me that there's a number of angles. Um, that could be used to expose and and inform and mobilize people to for your defense, um, including letters to the judge, um, coming to the hearing with you, mm-hmm. uh, contacting the Canadian government in particular, and also the Jewish Community Center to take to re- to re- to to demand that they stop the banning of you from the meeting. Yeah. It seems to me if, if they if they simply say this is okay, we will drop this banning of Dr. Weissfeld, then the whole thing goes away. Yeah, that's right. That, yeah. seems, that seems to be the main thing that I hear is if 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 the community center is saying that you must be banned or you are banned then the community center can say you're not banned. Yeah. It's kind of like it's very it's very easy. Yeah. It's not, it's not like it's a court issue. The court issue comes into in, in, into impact because of the community center. Yeah. So to me, if if we had if, if we even have 500 phone calls or 50 phone calls next week to the community center from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., five phone calls an hour for five days. And and letters and emails to their websites mm. demanding this, then I think we're mobilizing supporters to do what they could do from the comfort of their homes, their apartments, or even their cell phones. Yeah. I'm just seeing a way we can we can mobilize people to the community center to simply remove the ban. That's all yeah. they have to do. And then the whole thing goes away. Yeah. It, it, to me, I mean, because since they're the, they're the, they're the, they are the source from which the, the criminal justice system is attacking you. Yeah, that's my that's my view. Anyway, I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. The higher ups, you know, will. Uh, it's not going to be the librarian who decides, you know, uh, to to call the police on me on the September the twelfth. It's going to be, you know, somebody responsible at the uh, Holocaust Museum or maybe a security guard at the front desk. But, uh, well, I, I I think we have to. I think we need we need to lay out. If my suggestion is a good strategy, if not, what is another strategy, and and get people mobilized during the next three weeks. 
because we have time to get people mobilized. And yeah. right now we're not mobilizing anybody. Well, so we need to mobilize. I mean, in the sense of between you and me and the list, people who listen to this, who listen to this program, people who were listening last week, we need to get them yeah. mobilized to support you. Yeah. If they're mobilized to support you, then we can have an impact even though we're not in Canada with you. Yeah. Well, you know, the my friend, you know, who's a survivor from Hungary, he spoke to the higher ups there and told them, you know, like ask them, you know, why this is happening. And they gave him all sorts of excuses, which he repeated to me. So it's sort of, you know, indicates that the, the higher ups are gonna let this, you know, happen. They're gonna let me get arrested. Well and detained, well, you know, because but that can that that can change that could change. Yes. Even though your even though your friend's conversation wasn't successful, yeah. If we can if we continue to mobilize people and to demand this this happen, if we don't demand it, it won't change. If we do demand it, it could change. Yeah. So that's that's an idea I have is to yeah. start a campaign in your behalf on that center and to tell them that we want these charges dropped. We want this ban dropped. With yeah. the ban drop, there's no need for any kind of... With the ban drop, that gives less less rationale for the court to even mess with you. Yeah. The ban is dropped. The ban is dropped while I'm in front of you, Judge. Yeah. Well, we, we, have and, a, anyway. we have something of a of a, of a a an association here, you know, like we're called the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians. And, you know, the members, you know, they... They could intervene here, you know, like, uh, yeah. Well, like, they, I, I think they, I think they must intervene. If yeah. they don't intervene, the chance to succeed. Because to me, I have a different perspective. I don't want you going to prison. I, I you know, I don't want you inside the in the, the prison system because any anything can happen to you there. You're well, outside the prison system, but yeah. no, anything, but anything can happen to you in prison once you're in there. Yes, because they can I mean, set you up, you know, like it, just, they, you know, right. pay somebody, you know, to 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 rough you or, up, you know, that sort of thing. Or, yeah. or, or 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 just your, but let's say that I mean, there are many things that they, they can have somebody assault you, they can have somebody murder you, that your your health could take a um, turn for the worse just being inside. Your health could take a turn for the worse. So I'm always the person to avoid people going to jail and prison. Yeah, I avoid that at all costs. Because once you're in there, you have no control. When you're outside, you have much more control. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of how I see. For example, um, there was a demonstration, some demonstrations this week against against some racists who are now anti-homosexual activists who are claiming that kids are being groomed in school by teachers. And this is a real uh -huh. sick. M yeah. movement it's a very sick movement yeah and um so people had a demonstration against them in la and then the cops beat them up uh. now i'm of the view if i know the cops are here to beat me up i'm not going to do nothing let the cops beat me up i i will retreat tactically let the cops have the street why i don't want to be beat up yeah. i don't i'm not going to have no i'm not going down I'm going to have a conversation with the cops. Why? Why? I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying the situation, with, and now people have their criminal charges, they have to go to court. I'm not saying they did anything wrong demonstrating. No, no. But if you see the cops are going to attack you, just retreat. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just saying your situation, if we can keep you out of prison, to me, that's what we want to do. That's just my view. Is your is your is your individual situation, and I know you have you have to take a political stance. I want to do what I can to keep you from going to jail. That's just me. Yeah, the jail is it's just not a fun place. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, <laughs> no. I'm, yeah, no. I'm just not going to let this happen. But no, uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm not saying you should. No, no, yeah. I'm not. No, but, no. Uh, I'm not saying. I, keep, I am doing you know stuff, what man. I can. You know, legally. You know, like I've made all the submissions yeah. and everything like that. You, you know, sure like, have. Sure, you yeah, sure have. Could be. You a, sure could have. This, yeah. You know, like. But right. I've been in prison before. You know, I've been in prison for the cruise missile. I've been in prison for trafficking, you know, in order to survive, you know, here at our cultural center, even though it's legal now here in Canada, you know, like I did three months there, you know, for that. 
And, uh, you know, I've been in prison in Toronto, too. You know, I've been in prison in Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, I keep in shape, you know. So anybody wants to try to pick on me, you know, like they're going to get hurt. <laughs> you know, that's so, you know, uh, I've got that uh, taken into consideration there. Uh, we've only okay. got a couple of minutes here, you know, but... Uh, okay. Right. Tell me, you know, like uh, what you've been up to and, you know, what's happening and you know, what uh, what's, you know, like the thing. Well, with you. well I, we know as far as the Niger situation, yeah. um, the, the French, some envoys have been asked to leave and the anti the anti Francophone movement is continuing. Um, so far, there's been no invasion yet. So that's a good thing, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the, um, and I just want I just want to say the issue of the new government there really has to be determined by the masses of the Nigerians. Yeah. Right now they're immobilized to join the army, but yeah. are they mobilize are they mobilizing their political and economic orientation to demand to to, to, to demand that the government take certain stances to serve their interests? I'm I'm not coming out against the government. I'm just saying for this to work in the interest of the Nigerians, either even under a capitalist framework, Nigerian masses have to be heard. I'm not saying they're not being heard, yeah. but I just I want to just caution people that the ouster of the French is historically a good thing, but if if the Americans take their place, it's not going to be any better. Yeah, yeah. No, well, and it, it won't be. I mean, but that's up to that's up to the Nigerians to figure out, not yeah. me. Well, I you read this morning that seventy thousand Nigerians have volunteered, you know, for military defense oh, yeah. of the country. They're on maximum military alert now, so they're expecting an attack yeah. or something. And they've expelled, you know, the uh, the um, the French ambassador. You know, is gone. You know, like we should have been gone a long time ago. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, French, the French, the French are like the Belgians. They're yeah. the most brutal. The most the Belgians and the Germans and the French. You know, they they have the most brutal type of rule. The most, yeah. I mean, really sick. I'm, I'm not saying the English, the English were better. No, I'm not saying the English were better. But mm -hmm. the Belgians and the the Belgians and the French have this really kind of sordid, despicable history. Yeah. And with the francophone money situation and all the stuff that's going on with post-colonial uh, France and Af French colonies in Africa, you know, let's the BRICS summit does something for them. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the BRICS summit. Ha no, it, the BRICS summit has to do something for the uh, the the forcibly underdeveloped world, and these these countries are forcibly underdeveloped. They were intentionally not developed by France. Yeah, I mean, it's really it's really bad. I mean, it's, it's not good. It's kind of like it's kind of like the reservations in many ways. Yeah, yeah. In the United States, so the native people turn to gambling, to gambling to make money from non natives to provide jobs for native people. I mean that's what they quote had to turn to, because the way the way the whole question was settled in the United States, well here's some land, good luck and get the blank out, you know that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So if if the BRICS summit is gonna, really going to be about something, it can't be. I mean I'm not knocking per se BRICS, I'm not. But what will be the benefit for the working class and the poor and the farmers and those living in the desert? What can we do to demobilize the um, Islamists who are just, you know, I mean, that's just some nonsense there that they're, that they're throwing down. Hmm. You know, young young men and women with a gun. That's all that is. I mean, come on. The, 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 um, they're in poverty. They chew the way out because of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of how they interpret the Quran. So I'm just hoping that the BRICS movement will have some real impact positively for the working class and the poor. Time will tell. Yeah. Loans, loans to countries are not going to help them. Yeah. I don't care from the BRICS Bank or the World Bank. A loan, yeah. you have to pay the loan back. Yeah. So, you know, the whole world has to look at forcible underdevelopment. Yeah. That's what's happening in, in, in many communities or, yeah. force, or forcible ignorance. Yeah. From poverty, from poverty can come. I, I, I don't mean stupidity. I mean lack of development of mental faculties to critically think and come to solutions. That's what I mean by ignorance. Yeah. Okay? The drugs, the trafficking, all that stuff comes from forcible underdevelopment. It's, it's really sad.
Yeah. So you know, so let, let's let's just hope that something good could come out of the BRICS summit. Uh, I'm just gonna wait and see. I'm just gonna, you know, but creating a new bank to crack the challenge the World Bank in and of itself is simply setting up a pill a, a dual a dual power pillar. And the thing about it is, Abraham, mm -hmm. the black people, the black people in Brazil, the native people in Brazil. The black people in the United States, in Canada, in Germany, in France, we cannot go to the BRICS summit because we are French and American and Brazilians. That's something that needs to change. Hmm. If, if, if the native people of the U.S. want to go, they have to be accepted as, as, um, as, as um, genuine nations of people. Yeah. Right now, our right now our citizenship, our citizenship. Well, I, I think the I think the many people can pull it off, I, because they have they they have identity cards that make them demonstrate they're members of of, of another nation. Mm -hmm. Blacks, the the natives in Brazil, mm -hmm. you know, in France, Germany, UK, we can't do anything mm -hmm. because because we're citizens of these countries. Yeah, and yeah, that absolutely. that really mess that messes up our political uh, our our political clout internationally is damaged because of that. Yeah. I, yeah. I I thought about that recently. Like, you know, yeah. just it's something that we have to address because we can't go to no conferences. We're America. Yeah. America's not allowed. You know, what, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Just, I see it, that. Just yeah, about, yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah. There should be an international with a black nation representation as well as yeah. the other uh, min uh, national minorities, you know, in the world. There's and, 3, and, nations in the world and 193 uh, nation states, you know, so. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the, the folks from the Amazon. Yeah. The folks in the Amazon should have successful status. Yes, they should. Come on. Yeah. Just, just, and, and because they're Brazilians, they don't have any status. I mean, I'm saying status to sit on, to sit in bodies, to make, to have their their people's needs addressed and resolutions and um, solutions proposed on the international on the international yeah. scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just a problem. It's a problem. I, I, I just want to share to people who are listening. That these 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 oppressed communities cannot go to international bodies because they're citizens of another country. So a, a black a black American group could not go to the Africa Forum in 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 Russia. We're we're African American, but we could not go to talk about the needs of African Americans because we're not a nation. Mm. We're not an African na We're not an African nation. The yeah, African so Union. The African Union yeah. should have representation from the Black Nation of the USA. They sure should. They sure. They yeah. sure should. They, uh -huh. they sh and, and for blacks in Brazil, blacks in France, blacks in Germany, uh -huh. blacks in blacks in Brazil, because we were brought from Africa through the slave trade, and yeah. we have no nation. We say we can't go home to no nation. We, no, we cannot. There's no nation. We, the people, the people from Poland go back to Poland. I mean, they have a Polish connection. Yeah. These, these nations, France, you know. France and Francophone Africa, England from West Africa, probably Black American. We have no, we have no right of return anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying these organizations like BRICS, these conferences, um, Black people of color who have a history of being a victim of slavery or death of land and genocide and have no status, and that with the, with if that could change. People like me, you, others could go to fora and start making our demands known. But right now, we're locked out because of our citizenship. At least me, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's just something I just want to share. It's just something I want, I want people to think about. That's all. Right on. Okay, that's probably the end of our minutes. You know, for this week. So, okay, brother. Thank you. Okay. Until next week, then, Steve. Great. Until next week. Talk to you. Thank you.